All right, folks, welcome back on in to Logic Pro. What we're looking at here is the condensed version of my orchestral template. And what we'll start with is just a couple of brief notes. These are some things to keep in mind kind of as we're looking through this template. Number one, just because it's not on my template doesn't mean that it isn't a great instrument or that I don't own it or that I don't use it regularly. Again, this is just a starting point. Many composers' templates are just a place to begin. We oftentimes add and subtract from our templates on a project-to-project -project basis, and it just depends upon the needs of the task that we're trying to accomplish. Um, number two, I'll be as thorough as I can, but also in the name of not boring you to tears, there are nearly 150 tracks on this template. I'm going to move as expediently as I can kind of through this by doing three things. I'm going to show you the instrument that I'm using in each track. I'm going to show you uh, the effects for each instrument and I'll play just a tiny little bit. So let's get started. The first thing you'll notice is that my template is roughly, with a couple of exceptions, in score order. Generally, the way score order works is we'll have winds on top, brass next, followed by strings and percussion. Again, the exception is that my piano is at the top. I'm a pianist. That's my primary instrument. I use it to make a lot of my sketches, and I use it as my primary writing tool, so that's at the top. I'm also a, a singer, so I tend to have some uh, vocal elements at the very top as well. But looking at this grand piano that I have here, what you'll notice is that I tend to use a grand piano by Embertone called Walker 1955 Steinway D. And this is just the light version, you guys. But the one thing to keep in mind with pianos that you really want to make sure you have at least some control of, or at least have it as an option, is to get a little bit of pedal noise and a little bit of release volume as well, or some key noise. Some libraries have options for key noise. The reason you want this is because it's just going to lend more realism um, to your piano performances. I'll, I'll show you. When I push down the sustain pedal, which I have down on the floor underneath my piano, you're going to hear a little bit of noise happen. Listen to this. You can hear the, the hammers, you know, um, b lifting up off the string as the sustain pedal is compressed and then pushing back down again. And again, you have control over that here. So let's just play a little bit and hear what this uh, grand piano sounds like. And my goodness, that sounds cinematic because we have a ton of reverb on there. If we wanted something that was a little bit more realistic, check out that reverb tail, you guys. It's six and a half seconds long. We could turn it down to maybe something that's just below two seconds, and we could take down the wet signal just a little bit, and then we get something that sounds a little bit more like this. But again, it depends upon the effect that you're going for. And I kind of like the larger than life reverb, so I'm going to go ahead and put that back the way it was before. Okay, moving right along here. I've got some vocal and choral tracks set up. And I know what you're going to say. You're going to say, wait a minute, Will is talking, and I see his his voice uh, registering in the track here. This is, this is no MIDI instrument. This is an audio track. And you would be correct in that assumption. I keep a uh, microphone set up in my writing room at all times, and I've got my vocal channels set up at all times because, you guys, it is just so much easier to to have your your audio tracks set up with your favorite settings and just record and go rather than having to set them up every time. One plugin I want to make you aware of though is Valhalla Shimmer from a company called Valhalla DSP. It results in huge cinematic sounds and we'll likely be using some of it in some of our writing exercises here. So great idea to have a couple of vocal tracks set up and ready to go. Next on the list we've got a little bit of live not live choir, but rather sampled choir from 8DO's Requiem Pro. Let's go ahead and take a listen to what this sounds like. And this is a mixed ensemble, both men and women. Oh. 
yeah, and again, we got a little bit of reverb, tiny little bit of compression, might not even be kicking in because it might not be loud enough. And then we have just heightened the sort of upper mid range of the EQ to give things a little bit more shimmer. And you guys, what you're likely noticing is that even though all of this stuff was beautifully recorded in great churches and great halls, we're still adding plugins, reverb, EQ, compression to almost all of it because we can get another 10 or 20% of quality um, out of these samples. And we can even improve the sound a little bit more, not because it's recorded poorly, but just because we can heighten the listening experience a tiny bit more. So this is a sample library called uh, Olympus Elements, and it's from a company called Sound Iron. I've just added a little bit of reverb to it. Let's go ahead and take a listen to what this sounds like. That poor tenor was way out of his range. Let's play a little lower. That sounds really nice. So the one thing that I do want to make you aware of with a patch like this is you kind of probably see me every now and again reaching off the corner of my screen here. And what I'm doing when I'm doing that is I'm reaching for the mod wheel on my MIDI controller. And for most sample libraries, that's going to control the dynamics or how loud or soft um, the samples are at any given point. So you can kind of see what I'm doing right down here in the corner of contact. When my mod wheel is all the way down, samples generally perform quietly. When it's all the way up, they generally perform kind of loudly. But what you'll notice with some libraries is that this doesn't do a darn thing. But don't despair if you buy a library and you get it into your template and you realize that the mod wheel control either the instrument just hasn't been programmed to use it or it's not enabled, we can change that under the hood of contact. So go ahead and navigate to this little wrench here. And this is opening kind of the underworkings of the contact library. You can see how they've got all these crazy knobs here and uh, a lot of the graphic user interface of the instrument. If we scroll down, you guys, to this section that says mod, these are our modulators. And if we add a modulator, in this case, an external source, and we go to a MIDI CC and we add that, because again, it's an external source. It's coming from our keyboard. It's coming from outside the computer. So if we add that MIDI CC, the computer will ponder the mysteries of the universe for a moment, and it will default with MIDI CC number one, which is indeed our mod wheel, and we want to make sure that that's affecting volume. So check out what happens to uh, the sample library now that we've enabled that modulator. Yeah, look at that. It gets louder and softer depending upon what the position of the mod wheel is. Let's check that out one more time. It's a great way to just lend more realism to your performances. So if you get a library and it's not working in terms of mod wheel, just add it yourself. Okay, women legato passages. Very nice. And another common thing with a lot of these orchestral libraries, you'll be able to change the syllable that is being sung. Oohs and ahs. And some uh, libraries, like Requiem, I believe, even have phrase builders where you can kind of build, uh, you know, simple phrases. Okay, next. Although this isn't orchestral per se, just as I had um, live um, vocal tracks set up and ready to go, I do the same thing with my guitars. And the guitar um, amp emulator that I love is Bias Amp 2, in this case. They've come out with a sequel. Now, this is going to drive a lot of my guitar head friends crazy because they're purists and they only want to uh, record guitar amplifiers, only tube heads. Um, the fact of the matter is, guys, oftentimes in the cinematic and the media world, our turnaround times are snap, 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 go, go, go. We don't have the luxury of re-recording a guitar amp with a new tone because the director already needs the revisions yesterday. It just happens too fast. So I like to use a guitar uh, head and cabinet emulator to get some tones because if they don't like the way something sounds, instead of having to record everything all over again through a guitar amplifier, it just gives me a little bit more flexibility in my workflow. I always try to record live bass, but we also have 
um, an EXS24 instrument. The EXS24 is a Logic sampler, so there's nothing wrong with using some default instruments. Nothing wrong with using some Logic stuff with some additional plugins. So again, you see I'm using some Bias Amp on it. I'm also using my secret weapon from Waves. In this case, it's Renaissance Bass. Um, and basically what this is, is a selective EQ bass booster, and it just gives us a little more oomph in the low end. Let's play a little bit of this bass sound. Crunch for days and days and days, you guys. And again, we've got some little bit of additional distortion and some selective EQing going on as well. Okay, enough of the fluff. Let's get into some more orchestral type things. You guys, I just don't write with woodwinds an awful lot. It's it's not part of the style that I've become known for. Um, we do use a lot of ethnic woodwinds. Um, if you do want more uh, great info on woodwind sample libraries, um, take a look at Orchestral Tools Berlin Winds, which is outstanding. And Cine Samples also has a pretty great comprehensive uh, woodwind library called Cine Winds. But I'm just going to give you a little sneak preview of this tin whistle, this world wind. And I think this was a $10 library I got off Contact Hub, you guys. Take a listen. <laughs> Something important to keep in mind with woodwind programming is that you want to do some bends. Um, so again, as you see me reaching off the corner of the screen here, I'm reaching for my pitch bend wheel. It just makes it a little bit more realistic. Moving right along. Okay, let's get into some brass, you guys. So... There are a lot of choices for brass libraries out there. The one that I have used for several years now is Cinebrass. You guys, what I like about Cinebrass, it's not incredibly expensive. It's outstanding bang for your buck. You're getting really decent sounds. If I'm not mistaken, I could be mistaken, but I think they also recorded union players. And so they, they were good to the musicians in the recording of the sample library as well. But let's just go ahead and take a listen to what some of these sound like. And these are articulations. This is not a legato patch. I'm going to explain what a legato patch is when we get into this next trumpet patch here. And then with Cinebrass specifically, if you hold down the sustain pedal, you can get uh, sustain uh, patches as well. And get some longer notes in there. Okay, I've been using the word. It's time to discuss what in the world a legato patch is. So, you guys, what you'll notice is that if you're trying to play a melody, you're going to have a difficult time playing a melody with a sustain patch. It's just challenging. I'll show you kind of what I mean uh, with this previous trumpet patch I was on. This is a sustain patch. I'll play a melody. It sounds like bad 90s video game music, but when I activate a legato patch, take a listen to this, same melody. The difference in a legato patch is that the sample library producers have actually recorded the transitions in between notes. So we actually get all of the activity that's happening in between notes actually playing. That's why it sounds more real. So there's our Cine Samples trumpet legato patch moving right along here. We have a solo trumpet legato and I'm just going to leave these settings off because they're the same as the previous trumpet patch. Moving along to our solo horn, True Legato. There we go. Got the compressor to come up. And again, you guessed it, we're using a little bit of 
the Cinebrass Library. You guys even get the mistakes. This is unadulterated reality. And again, you're going to notice that, as I said before, we're doing some selective EQing here. We can still get some frequencies that build up, and that's going to be indicative of every single instrument. They're all going to have some challenges to them from a mixing standpoint. Um, again, here we have now two horn articulations. And that is also from Cinebrass. Two horn legato. Six horn articulations. And you'll notice we even got some triple tonguings in there. Um, you guys are probably aware of key switches, but key switches are basically uh, when you compress a key on your MIDI controller, it allows you to change the articulation or the type of instrumental performance. That's very common with sample libraries. Okay, bone articulations. Here we go. Trombones. And again, just a little bit of reverb, a little bit of compression for some punch, and we're boosting the mid-range just a hair. And that is the trombones. Closing out of this and moving right along here, We've got some tubas, in this case also from Cinebrass. Now you guys, something I'd like to make you aware of when you're using your reverbs. Sometimes, depending upon the instrument, you can get some nasty buildup on the low end, especially if it's a low instrument like contrabasses or tubas or cymbasos. What's a great thing to do sometimes is just to go in and EQ your reverb to get rid of some of the low resonance of the reverb. It's just, it gets really muddy if you don't do that at times, and it can just make for a cleaner sound. Let's listen to some of these tubas. Nice and growly, but if you think those are growly, you guys, check out a Simbasso. If you've never seen a picture of a Simbasso, go look one up, you guys. They are the wildest looking low brass instruments you'll ever see in your life. Pretty goofy looking. Okay, a little bit of low end boost in the EQ, and if I'm not mistaken, actually, we don't have any of the low end cut out. Maybe it sounds better that way in this case. I forget what's on my template. Guilty. All right, Simbasos. Nasty, good, tasty growl down there at the end. <laughs> 